invented is called Spellbinder. And um, Spellbinder is a program that takes transcripts of conversations and creates bots. And um, what I mean by transcripts are things like um, TV show scripts, movie scripts, uh, instant messenger chats, or transcripts of other special events where there could be an interview with someone where there's a, a collection of inputs and responses from, from a particular person or entity that we'd like to turn into a bot. The way we do this is we have some collection of existing bots, or that could just be one bot, the Alice bot, for example. And the, um, the existing bots include uh, a set of safe productions, the, um, the input patterns for that bot's personality, and the response templates for that personality. So what we're going to do is just throw away the templates, get rid of the original bot answers, and just consider the set of patterns for a bot. Or again, it could be, you know, we could do something like take, take a whole bunch of bots just to get a really big collection of patterns. So these are things where people have actually trained the bot, and they've, they've trained it by, by writing specific patterns. And now we're going to just look at those patterns like we do in the super bot with, with essentially blind responses. And now we're going to take the uh, transcripts that we have and combine those in a process of training to create a new bot which has the same original safe reduction set, some of the same patterns, a subset of those patterns, and for each of those patterns, a new response, a new learned response. And this is the, um, the same drawing, essentially, in more detail. So, if you've got a, a transcript, uh, let's say Star Trek episode, because that's something I've looked at in detail, then um, you've got the collection of things that people say to a character like Captain Kirk. So, there, so if you go through all the Star Trek episodes, there are different characters saying things to Captain Kirk, and then Captain Kirk's responses to those. So the inputs and the responses. Now, um, we take each one of those inputs and run it through the reductions to create that canonical form. So for each of the inputs in the, in the, in the Star Trek episodes, whatever transcripts we're looking at, we're going to reduce the input to its simplest canonical form. Once we have the input in um, canonical form, we go through that, that huge collection of patterns that we have and see which pattern it matches most closely. Now we combine that pattern with the um, original response. That's the combined step here. What's coming down here is that original Captain Kirk response. So now we've got a new, a new pattern um, from our original list of patterns that someone has created. And we're combining that with the, with the Captain Kirk response or whatever character to create a list of learned patterns and responses. And then we, we combine that with, again, the original safe reduction set, so that in our new bot character, we can take the um, whatever input comes to that bot, run it through the same um, reduction canonization process, and, um, and figure out which of the learned AIML responses most closely matches that uh, input. So here's a specific example. Suppose the input in a transcript is, I just told you that I love Japanese food. And the response is, I don't know if I like it. So the reduction, the reduction search, um, the reduction tree search, or the canonization, takes that input and converts it into a simpler form, I love Japanese food. So now once we have that um, canonical form, there may not actually be a specific pattern, I love Japanese food, in the pattern set. There may just be one that says, I love something, I love star, I mean, it's saying, um, I love, followed by some words that the bot doesn't specifically recognize. So now we're going to combine those and take the original response, I don't know if I like it, and associate it with that input. So now if, they, if the, if the, if the user or client of this new bot comes along and says, um, 
I love cookies, or I love Philadelphia, or I love something that there's no specific pattern for, it's going to get the response, I don't know if I like it. Um, several years ago, we developed a, a highly simplified version of Spellbinder, which was called Pandora Writer. And Pandora Writer also examined transcripts and created AIML categories. The problem with Pandora Writer <coughs> is that it, it creates patterns that are way too specific. So these are two examples from uh, the Star Trek episodes where some character says to Captain Kirk, I wonder if he brought his personal chef along with him to assess this three. And the response is, probably rank half its privileges. In another case, someone said, I wonder why he's insistent that our tactical aids come down. And the response is, the colony is isolated, exposed, up there on the edge. But now here, he probably wants additional advice. The trouble with generating uh, patterns and responses in this very simplified way is that it's very unlikely that a new client will come along and type exactly the same input. I wonder if he brought his personal chef along to assess this through. In fact, it's almost you know, impossible that that would ever happen. So um, the advantage of Pandora Writer now is that it would take those inputs and reduce them to a canonical form. Oops. We take those inputs and reduce them to a canonical form, and then discover that the, the closest matching pattern in the, in the um, pre-existing pattern set is just, I wonder, by itself. So now, every, for every, um, for every um, transcript instance where the input to Captain Kirk was, I wonder, something, the uh, spellbinder will add the response to this list of random responses. So now someone can say, you know, um, I wonder if the weather is nice in Philadelphia today, and the response might be um, probably rank half its privileges, which may not be the best, most appropriate response for that. I'll come back to that in a minute. But basically, um, the um, Spellbinder will, will create new AIML categories where the um, pattern has this kind of generalized form, which includes a wild card. In the example of Captain Kirk, um, if, well, in any, any example, one of the properties of Spellbinder is that, for example, if in, in any of those transcripts, in any of those Star Trek episodes, if any character ever asks Captain Kirk any variation of what is your name, if they say identify yourself, or who are you, or what is your name, tell me who you are, if there's just one instance of those anywhere in the transcripts, then Spellbinder will instantly learn the response to all of them because all of them are in that safe reduction set. So it just takes one instance of one variation of an input to learn all of the variations that we know about in our safe reductions. Um, in, in, um, in the Captain, case of the Captain Kirk bot, we looked at 72 episodes of the original Star Trek series. Um, Captain Kirk has about 9,000 lines of dialogue in those 72 episodes. That Running that through Spellbinder creates 2,000 AIML categories. And those AIML categories have a total of about 6,000 responses. So this, what this is telling us is um, it's, it's possible to use Spellbinder to create a, a version of Captain Kirk, but there still may not be enough in there to make it a really believable bot, because 2,000 responses is probably not quite enough. You probably need closer to, let's say, 5,000 um, but remember, those 2,000 AIML categories are combined with the safe reduction set. I guess I forgot to say that the safe reduction set contains about, um, about um, 20,000 AIML reductions. So the total number of categories in, in the resulting bot will be 22,000, namely the, um, the, the 20,000 standard safe reductions combined with the 2,000 new base categories, which are learned by this app. And again, significantly, it does learn responses for the cases where the patterns have wild cards, meaning that you know, not just one specific input, but a whole um, class of inputs where some of the words match can um, have responses based on the Spellbinder algorithm. So the, some of the limitations are 
basically that um, what you get out of this is a good first draft of the bot, meaning that um, what I talked about before, the two to three months of work to create a bot can probably be cut down to, let's say, one month. Because instead of having to start from scratch, you basically got 2,000 responses generated instantly. Um, one of the most common critiques of the Captain Kirk bot you'll hear is that the responses are random or out of context. And of course that would happen because it's matching, um, you know, it's, it's picking responses from all different Star Trek episodes and all different specific contexts and giving you those responses to your specific input. Um, Captain Kirk, in, in, in the Star Trek series, Captain Kirk does not know everything about Star Trek. Um, for example, nowhere in any Star Trek episode does any character ever ask any other character, what is a phaser? And no character ever explains what a phaser is. But you're just sort of, you know, you're sort of expected to infer that from the context of the show that a phaser is a type of weapon. And so when people test the Captain Kirk bot, they'll test it with you know, Star Trek trivia knowledge like that. What is a phaser? And just the raw uh, bot generated by Spellbinder, of course, will not have that response. So, so we'll give a, a random or out of context response. The, the way we um, solve this problem, or try to solve this problem, is to use other AI ML tools to augment the bot that we've created with the Spellbinder algorithm. So um, one trick is just to um, combine the uh, Captain Curse bot with a um, collection of responses from the Atlas bot. And AI, AI ML, for those of you who don't know, has this kind of additive property where you can take two bots and can just glom them together. And if there are any duplicate patterns between those two bots, depending on which one you load first, um, this, the, the one you load second will have priority over the first one. So um, if, the, if the bot has a response, if the Kirk bot has a response for a name, which is my name is Captain Kirk, then um, that will override the response of the Alice bot's um, name, my name is Alice. But um, the, the Alice bot may well have an answer to the question, like what is a phaser already built into it? So it's augmenting the knowledge of the Kirk bot with the Alice brain. And then of course, I've talked about some of the other AI ML tools like targeting and so forth that the bot master can then apply to the first draft of the bot to, to create a more and more refined version. I'm doing great. How about you? Our five-year mission, to seek out new worlds and new civilizations, to go boldly where no man has gone before. Some of the responses there were responses learned by the Spellbinder algorithm and other ones were ones that we trained subsequently using the tools that I mentioned. Any questions? Yes. Do you make any attempt to try to infer patterns from example inputs? Not with this algorithm. We're, we're um, only in the sense that we're, we're inferring them by selecting from a set of mm -hmm. patterns that people have written previously. Um, and, and the fact that people have written them previously means that they're probably high quality patterns. What I mean is you don't try to create a more general pattern that would cover those patterns using wild cards and so forth. Right, right. That's outside the scope. Uh -huh. So I've, I've chatted with the Captain Kirk several times. Mm -hmm. It's entertaining. Um, is it really, is it meant to be a fake? I mean, like, you're supposed to be, feel like you're talking to Captain Kirk, or is it supposed to be you're talking to an interesting bot that will share your interest? You know, I think what I was going for was actually talking to um, Captain Kirk. And by the way, this is the fake Captain Kirk. Please go over my talk and insert the word fake before every instance of me saying Captain Kirk. You know, it's, a, it's a parody. I'm going to wrap it up here because I've actually got more time. Thank you.